To be honest, it almost seems trendy to bash the FIRE movement in the media. Recently, I've come across a lot of negative articles and videos on the topic, especially the why we quit the FIRE movement variety. And don't get me started on that Susie Orman rant. They say any publicity is good publicity, and the FIRE movement overall has gained significant media attention in recent years. Google searches for financial independence retire early have massively increased in the last five years, but it's clear in browsing results there are still serious misconceptions about the FIRE movement. So I wanna clear some of that up today while offering some hopefully motivating advice no matter where you are on your journey or whether you consider yourself part of the movement or not. Because nobody can deny there are a lot of great financial practices FIRE seekers believe in that would help anybody improve their financial situation. If you're new to me, by the way, my name is Frankie. Thank you for stopping by and hanging out today. I do make videos twice a week, helping anybody get resolved to get good with money. So subscribe if you wanna see more from me. Like this video if I earn it by the end and stay for the end because I do plan to have a little rant about the normal retirement path. And with that, let's dive in. Starting with number one, they save 80% or more of their income and live off of rice and beans. First of all, there's a wide spectrum when it comes to people's savings rate within the FIRE movement. It could be as little as 15 to 20% or as much as 80 to 85% on the more extreme side. The 80% plus crew probably live with their parents or paid off their mortgage or are high income earners, let's say 200,000 plus a year. It's a small minority, but that's what the media likes to report on. FIRE is all about how quickly you're trying to achieve financial independence. Obviously, the more you save, the less you spend. Therefore, you can get to your FIRE number where work becomes optional sooner. For me, I split the difference. I started way behind nearly six figures in debt at age 31. So first I got to 25%, then 35% in year two, and 50% savings rate in year three and four. I found that sweet spot at 50%, and I do encourage people to try to get there as well if possible. But you should never feel totally put out or eat only rice and beans to get by on your journey. In fact, my last video was all about the benefits of splurging. Most in the FIRE movement don't feel put out. An Ameritrade study found that extreme lifestyle sacrifices are actually less common among FIRE devotees. 67% of study participants said FIRE wouldn't be worth it if they had to live like they're broke. Instead, FIRE is all about experimentation. You need to find what feels most comfortable month to month. You have lots of levers to pull and tinker with. How much you save or invest, trying out a budget, reducing expenses, avoiding fees, automation, and yes, even extreme frugality for a little bit and so on. Misconception number two is that they're running away from work and their job. If you're looking to get on the fire path because you simply hate your job, you're doing it wrong. Fire isn't about running from something, it's about running to something. For more than 70% of survey respondents, financial independence is their main pursuit instead of retirement itself. And over 60% said they'd prefer to retire at a normal age so they can live more comfortably. Just 32% of respondents said that their goal was to stop working altogether. Reaching financial independence does not mean the end of work. In fact, most people want to achieve five so they can pursue a passion or try a unique career that feels risky as a nine to five, especially if they have a family. It could be starting a business, turning a hobby into a gig, or simply working less, let's say two to three days a week instead of five. It's the retire early part of the FIRE acronym that gets the naysayers hung up. Perhaps RE is only part of the acronym because saying FIRE is catchy and retire early is a clear desirable state for many people. Yes, it likely means an escape from the traditional nine to five, including traffic, meetings, KPIs, and daily small talk, but most fire seekers still plan to work hard at something that's important to them. It could be work for money and or work for passion, but one thing is true. They don't quit contributing to society in some way, shape, or form. I'd love to get back in the classroom or back on that baseball field coaching, Maybe I can help make personal finance a course requirement in school. Let me know if you agree we should teach this money stuff in school. Misconception number three, FIRE is impossible on a low or even moderate income. Being on the FIRE path 
isn't only for six figure earners and up. While you might hear these stories of, you know, the 200,000 a year techie retiring in less than 10 years, it's again, not the most common fire path. It's instead everyday people, even low income earners, living below their means and achieving their goals a decade or more sooner than the average person by getting committed and saving and investing consistently. It doesn't matter how much money you make, it's how much you save and invest that matters most. Your savings rate matters most. It's not that super low income earners can magically retire in five or 10 years, that'd be extremely difficult, but retiring 10 years before the average person is extremely doable for anybody, anyone, on any income can make their lives better by spending less on things that don't improve their lives. Now on the opposite end, many high income earners struggle to manage their money well. 40% of high income earners are still living paycheck to paycheck. Earning more actually makes it easy to let lifestyle inflation creep into your life. You constantly upgrade and become used to a certain amount of spending. That makes it very difficult to retire because you won't have practice living off of a modest, or even average income. FIRE is simply a math exercise. Running numbers through a retirement calculator is the best way to see and understand compound interest and how possible achieving FI really is. I think Mr. Money Mustache said it best when he wrote, at the core, these FIRE ideas are simply about taking some solid math, combining it with principles of human happiness, and then distilling it down into a list of simple tactics that will get you way ahead in all areas of life. The benefits go way beyond money. Number four, they're obsessed with the FIRE movement and accumulating wealth. People that consider themselves FIRE don't eat, sleep, and breathe FIRE. <laughs> breathe FIRE. Anyway, I don't, and I have a mostly FIRE channel on YouTube that keeps me really engaged with the movement a couple of days a week. Happiness and freedom are the goals of FIRE. That's what people get obsessed with. Over 90% of financially independent individuals say happiness is more important than money. Plus, I actually found financial freedom starts to be realized far before reaching financial independence. I talked about it as a state of being in this video you might wanna check out after this one. Surprisingly, I've only read one personal finance book this year. Instead, I've been enjoying mindset, productivity, leadership and entrepreneur books. I'm really enjoying Ryan Holiday's Daily Stoic right now. Link below to that one, it's excellent. But I'm doing this intentionally. I recognize that I need balance, everything in moderation, even seeking financial independence. And happiness is far more important than wealth. It just so happens in the society we live in, money causes a lot of stress and anxiety. Therefore, fire seekers wanna put that anxiety to bed by getting on the path, but they aren't in a hurry because you can actually solve a good chunk of your biggest money issues just two to three years into your financial independence journey. Once you learn the basics and set yourself up for success, it's pretty easy to stay on the path passively. You don't have to be perfect to be fire. You're going to make mistakes. You might even switch fire paths. Life happens and you'll need to adjust, but it's best to aim big and implement these basics. The core principles are easier to grasp and implement than most people think. Reaching FI will likely take decades to achieve for most people where work becomes optional. So FIRE seekers have to practice patience and keep a long-term perspective. You certainly can't reach FIRE overnight. And you also can't force FIRE on anyone. FIRE seekers know this, so don't write them off. We're not obsessed. We're not pushing an agenda. We're just determined to solve our money problems so we can seek a richer, as in happier, life. Number five, fire is only for young people that don't have kids. Financial independence, again, is for anyone on any income at any age. Notice I leave off the RE part sometimes. Obviously, you can't retire early if you're 60 with a net worth of, let's say, $100,000 or less, but you can set yourself up to at least enjoy a standard retirement following fire principles. Tons of people over 50 discover fire and realize the fire path can actually help them make up for decades of financial mistakes. They realize there's still hope and it doesn't mean extreme living. They already have that urgency built in and desire and fire can actually be that beacon of hope. And anecdotally, I've heard those over 50 in the fire movement on the path are most enthusiastic. My motto is worth repeating here, but I'm gonna modify it. Typically I say, save and invest half, 
retire twice as fast because you can retire in as little as 17 years if you save 50% of your after-tax income. But if you're in your mid 50s and just discovering FIRE and feel behind, remember this, save and invest half and grind, there's still a great chance you'll retire on time. It's a little long-winded, but hopefully it works. <laughs> in terms of kiddos and having a family, yes, kids cost money, but from what I hear as a non-parent, the reports about the costs of having a single kid in his or her lifetime are grossly overreported. Not to mention, those seeking fire understand the importance of saving for big expenses ahead of time for kids, like paying for higher education, and they've learned how to do it right think 529 plans for growth and tax benefits. If you can get the whole family on board with living below their means, practicing frugality often, and learning to appreciate family and shared experiences more than things and stuff, you're doing great. Those are excellent lessons to learn young. Having kids is actually what turns many people onto the FIRE movement in the first place. They want the freedom to spend more time with their kids. Then they might discover an alternative FIRE path like Coast FIRE or Barista FIRE, and then they run the numbers and realize they can make it happen sooner than they thought. Or maybe one parent can quit their job and be a parent full time. Bottom line is kids in less time equals more motivation. Number six, they don't know how to loosen up and have fun. Just Live in the moment. The whole reason for seeking fire is to lead the happiest, most satisfying life you can possibly lead. That means now in the present as well as in the future. Indulge when and where you can, but know your level of happiness isn't tied to things or stuff or drinks or going out for coffee and meals. Happiness comes from meeting certain core human needs and there are countless ways to meet each of those needs many of which don't cost any money. Not knowing how to say no or resist temptations gets people in trouble and in debt. Most of these are short-term pleasures that distract from long-term goals. Heck, most people get into a financial debt mess and don't consider setting financial goals at all. FIRE has also given me a new appreciation for new kinds of affordable fun. Exercising, reading a book, taking my dog to the park, listening to podcasts on daily walks, cooking meals together, making these videos, and even watching the sunrise and sunset. There are many ways to accomplish tasks or have fun affordably. I've never put this together, but fire seekers, I think, are just creative thinkers. They find ways to get what they want for cheap so they can enjoy it even more. I wrote a whole book about money hacks, for example, because I get genuine joy from earning a discount, scoring free tickets to an event, browsing by nothing groups, playing the credit card points game, or hosting friends for a game night. Because the alternative sounds so much worse. Throw money in every direction in a constant chase of dopamine hits without considering goals while living paycheck to paycheck the entire time. Distractions lead to more debt, less freedom, and less free time later on. Debt or saving zero is robbing from future you. Number seven, they don't have backup plans. First of all, fire seekers believe in and prioritize building an emergency fund as a core principle to be prepared for just about anything. They typically aim to have at least a year of expenses on hand. Further, there are many different paths to fire. In fact, I covered 10 fire types in a recent video. Fire seekers are typically lifelong learners and creative thinkers that know how to adapt. And in terms of a backup plan, well, there's always working longer or going back to work. That's kind of the beauty of it. It's not black and white. Work, then don't work. Then work again if you get bored or need to. Work will always be there. But time with family, good health, and energy to travel, for example, those things can be fleeting. So it's all about aligning priorities with timing. Fire seekers believe every problem can be solved, and financial independence gives you more power to solve these problems. Fire attracts the kind of people that are willing to do what it takes to achieve success and happiness, but not at all costs, obviously. The truth is though, those in the fire movement don't have everything figured out, but the community is always there for support and ideas. They're all about lifting one another up and working through it together. It truly is a community ready to help without arrogance or judgments. It's far better than not talking money with anyone because it's a taboo topic. Nothing is permanent, not even staying retired, but most people don't consider any other path or plan than retirement at the standard age when their physical and mental health will not be at their peak. I love hearing early retiree stories saying they're living their best life at age 45 or 55. I used to dread getting older. Now I'm looking forward to it. Okay, rant time because I get so fired up about this topic. That pun was not intended. 
Fire has spread in popularity because it works, but criticism has also spread because others aren't willing to look under the hood. They'd rather misunderstand it, misreport on it, report on extreme cases, and share negativity about it because it's different than societal norms. Perhaps what's normal is wrong. What's normal about going into thousands of dollars of debt because of loud advertisements and trying to impress people you don't care about with toys and things that depreciate in value rapidly? What's normal about rolling the dice financially for decades, living on the edge and hoping you'll figure it out later or get bailed out later on? What's normal about schools not teaching us even the basics when it comes to personal finance, then providing $100,000 in loans to an 18 year old with no credit and taking 30 years to pay it off $250,000 later? What's normal about not setting future goals and limiting your beliefs when it comes to creating generational wealth, providing a better life for your kids than you had growing up and enjoying life on your own terms? What's normal about sitting at your desk in your 50s instead of seeing the world or doing things you've always dreamed of doing because you feel stuck financially? I'll tell you what, nothing. Yeah, Frankie, but that's just like your perspective, man. Lebowski, anyone? Anyway, you're right. And I'm certainly biased since I'm on the fire path and I'm not here to convince anyone to join the movement, but I will be here and provide content and context that helps people when they decide they're tired of the status quo that's practically designed to keep most people broke. If you want more out of your life and want more of your hard work and earnings to go further and grow instead of disappear shortly after each payday, consider subscribing and checking out some more of my content. I try to keep everything actionable, relatable, and even realistic. For example, I've also covered early retirement downsides to be aware of in a recent video because I'll never say the fire path is the perfect path of rainbows and happiness. But I will say, I'm five times happier than I was five years ago when I was drowning in debt, depressed about it, and dead silent about it. I'd love to hear your opinion on this fire stuff as it pertains to misconceptions. Is there anything I missed from my list that frustrates you that others get wrong? Do you disagree with anything in this video? I love feedback and engaging with people in the comments in a positive and constructive way. Or add to my what's normal about rant. That would honestly make my day. My name is Frankie. Your name is committed for getting to the end. I genuinely appreciate your time. Like this video if you liked it and I earned it. It really does help me out. No, seriously. <laughs> I hope to see you in a few days on the next one. Thanks. What's normal?